Autotask has uh, certain possibilities to automate your billing based on your context or configuration items. Before we go into that, I want to be, make sure that you absolutely know what are the pros and the cons of this. First of all, this does not work as a regular contract, but will create charges. But having said that, it will continue to develop within Autotask and will show you the possibilities so you can decide for yourself. Mostly with our clients, we are not sure if they want to automate it. We stick to the recurring contracts and manual adding products or contacts. Okay, having said that, let's go to a company, Amazon Demo, in this purpose and create a new contract. Contract, new contract. You can choose for this uh, fixed price or recurring service contract. Uh, the best practice for Autotask is fixed price contract, but we like a recurring service contract, so we know it's a recurring service because this is. The main purpose of this is that you get paid by a customer automated based on billing rules. So we create a recurring service contract per contact billing rule. Let's do it monthly. You can do it any period you like. And for the purpose of this video, let's put it to the end, the start date in December and the end date in January. It doesn't really matter, but let's start on a date like this. So we already have the manage uh, contact contract category. We advise you to implement that as well. So when you do the approve and post for your billing, you can see what type of revenue this is. And we leave the rest like this because this is solely for testing purposes. So we do not add any service bundle on this contract. It's just for a uh, billing instance and we do it in another way. We will show you that. So you can just go next, next, next. You can choose what type of approval post you want. We recommend to keep it to manually so you can see it and check if everything is correct. And we just click through the contract. So let's close this. We open the contract here. Now it opens in another window. And then we go to the fourth tab. One, two, three, four billing rules. Here we are going to uh, set up a billing product, what we already made before at the billing codes section. So we create the billing product here. We choose the per contact billing instance. And then you have certain choices to make. Do you want it on what day you want to start? What's the minimum maximum units? what kind of uh, execution method you want, manual or automated. We normally uh, keep it on automated. We want to create them as billable, of course, because we want to get our money. And then you want, have to make an important decision to make. Do you want to have only full billing periods or prorated? We advise if you have a lot of changes to uh, implement the prorated because you get paid by the day. Do you don't like it? You can just choose full billing period. So you get billed from the next billing instance. So you can choose how you want to show the names. Here you want to use the product price or you can override it here. So our base price is 60. Let's override it here and we put it on 75. Then you can choose to put it on or off the daily prorating. We put it on and let's put it on 250 per day. It's around that, no, not 250, 250. Okay, here you are done now. You can save this. As you can see, here are billing rules now, okay? There's an option to manage rule associations. You can go here and you can add them. But we want to show you another place as well because that's more like a main landing page. So we can close this once and then you go to your base screen, to your contracts. So, and then to contact to billing product. This works exactly the same with your configuration item to billing product, but now we focus on the billing from the contact. You click on here, you see the company, and you see that there are six persons contacts which are not added right now. Here you have certain filters if you want to check things, and here show already associates contacts. You can see we have another test contract and already two persons set up. So just play around with this and you can see how it works. So now we will associate a product. We choose the different manage contact with effective date on any date you like. Let we can put it on the 1st October in this case and we save it. As you can see, 
we created a new contract which started in December, but there was already an active contract on the 1st of October. We use that in this case. So you can continue to map all the products you have. How does that look? There are two ways how to check how it works. First of all, when you want to push it for the upcoming period, you have to go to your admin. Then you go to your contract, then to your contract billing rules, upcoming instances, and you can check your history here. So again, menu, admin, contracts, then you have the things you want to look if it works. Let's check the history to show you. You see that we have the history and the chart dates here as well. And you can see we already had some charges created automatically. Let's come on back. You see you created here two charges. You have the whole history here. It's important for troubleshooting, but if you want to have the upcoming billings incidents, you see there are two contracts. One is scheduled 1st of December, and you then you can push by hand, execute now or preview. As you can see, there are three at this contract. And there will be on the 1st of December, we will push three contacts. You can push it now as well. You can do the same for different you can preview. You can see there are five mapped in. Okay. How then you go to your normal race contracts and approve and post. For people who already used to work with Autotask, this is not a recurring contract, it's a charge. That's why. We want to ask you to consider it really hard if this is the way you like to uh, charge all your revenue because you are used to recurring revenue. So it's a different way. You just need to know that and be considerate of that. It will look in the system right now and you will see when it is done looking that it found the billing instances here as well. Let's approve this. Please don't do this in your live environment, but this is a testing purposes environment. So we can click whatever you like without any problem. But be careful, these are building rules. But we want to show you how it works, so we will push it through. So it will approve and post. Then we go to our items to invoice. And let's take it to the end of the year so you can see everything was there. We search it. You can see that we have revenue. As you can see here, the recurring contracts are per contact charts are built correctly. In this way, you can automate your billing based on contacts or based on conversion items. We already did uh, share it with you guys twice. Be very careful if you want to go this route that you know what you're doing and know the consequences. If you are not sure if you want to go this route or are not totally sure if you want to automate it, just use recurring contracts and map the conversion items by hand. Yes, it takes more labor, but then you're fully in control. Good luck with these implementations and Enjoy the rest of the course.